I think students really need to consider the sort of environment they're going to be exposed to in graduate school. Graduate school is very different from undergraduate education. Here in graduate school you want to have a mentor. Your advisor sort of becomes your science mother or father. And they're there to really nurture you and develop you into a complete scientist and engineer. And at Davis you really get that intimate um, interaction, commitment from the faculty, the staff, the administration to support graduate students and make sure that they have a really good educational enrichment while they're here. So at UC Davis, when we admit students, all of them were committed to making sure they succeed. And so you're not just one of a number that we're hoping half of them get through at the end of the pipeline. We're here to make sure that all of our students excel. When you first start at graduate school, it's sort of, it is somewhat similar to being an undergraduate. You're taking a lot of courses and so forth. Um, the rigor is significantly higher. Um, the competition level and the quality of your fellow peers is very high and exceptional. And that raises the bar for everyone. So you really have to push yourself, hard work, motivation to succeed and do well. But then after that, there's a transition. You're, you're no longer really a student in a classroom, but you're in a laboratory environment. And you have to, learn from those around you, learn from your advisor, network, um, take advantage of the whole community here on campus to really make sure that your research gets pushed forward in a rapid pace. Um, the big difference is there's, there's really a transition between absorbing information versus creating new knowledge in graduate school. And so, you know, we have a, a common joke that we say that if we knew what the answer was, it wouldn't be research. And I think that's part of the, it's a little bit scary, I think, for students to make that transition. There isn't necessarily a right answer at the end that you're 100% confident of. It's sort of, um, you're building on thousands of other people that are working and have worked in the past in these things, and you're making, you know, a, a leap forward and doing something new and exciting and creative. And you really have to use you know, all of your skills as well as develop skills and um, interactions with other people to make sure that you're pushing the forefront of new knowledge. Well, I'd say I'm an engineer, which a lot of people don't expect. Um, I'm a mother, I have two kids, and um, that's sort of a little bit different. You can be a, a woman in science and engineering and excel and um, if you come to campus at UC Davis you'll find that there's a tremendous number of diversity. There's lots of women, people of color, it's very diverse. Um, there's also a lot of international students so you get exposed to just different perceptions and cultures while you're here. Um, the typical student isn't necessarily 22 years old and straight out of their undergraduate career. Um, I'd say probably some, you know, there's a, a good percentage that have already been working for a few years and have decided to come back and get an advanced degree. Um, there's people that have taken a year or two to really figure out what they want to do as well and come back. So you have this different life experience here at graduate school. Um, I remember in one class I was a little bit surprised because I thought, oh, am I being, you know, is somebody checking me out? Because there was a gentleman who was about 50 in my class, and this was a sophomore class, and I was very surprised. He was just another student who was coming back to change his education, so, and his career pathway. Engineers don't work just with other engineers. We work with biologists, chemists, physicists, neurobiologists, other engineers, and it's even humanities and social sciences. And all of those people giving different perspectives and putting it all together is how science is really moving forward now. It's not just working as an individual. Um, you really need to work in a team 
and mix it up and have different ideas and bounce them off of each other. And um, you know, sometimes they're totally crazy and somebody will go, hey, that's totally crazy. But it really makes you think differently. And I think pushing people like that is, is what we really need. And that's why you'll find that no science is being done just as on an individual basis anymore. People are always working together. Is that you just have an environment where um, people work together, uh, people nurture each other, people support each other. Um, there are you know, difficulties that happen to anyone, but here we're always there trying to make sure that everyone moves forward, everyone succeeds. And faculty support each other, students support each other, and faculty-student relationships are really great. Um, it's much less formal, I think. I think the, the people that make good engineers are the ones who don't necessarily want to memorize something. They want to know why something works the way it does. Because if you understand why it works that way, you can figure out any problem of what goes wrong along the pathway. Um, a lot of what engineers do is not um, create something, but you know, when they're working necessarily, but improve something. How can I make this better? Yes, it's been done this way for 30 years, but can I make a step? Can I decrease emissions? Can I make it more energy efficient? What can I do to make this process better? And that's a lot of what engineering is, is, you know, really making strides forward to keep on pushing and improving things. How can we make something that's safer? How can we make something that um, is more nutritious or you know, has a better shelf life or tastes better? Right? All of those things come in, or a product that has better properties that people will enjoy more. Um, that's a lot of, of what drives engineers. And so it's, it's solving problems for society and improving things for society. And I think um, I teach a, an undergraduate course that's right at the beginning, and I ask students why they want to be an engineer, in particular why they want to be a chemical or biochemical engineer. And um, the answers are always, there's a huge um, aspect of, I want to make things better for the world. And I think that is probably what drives our, the people that come to Davis the most. And they know that to do that, they need their engineering skills and they need to have good problem solving skills. And they'll get that here, and they'll be in an environment where that's part of what we try to accomplish. The thing that excites me about research is, is really understanding what's going on. Um, there's many times when you'll actually uh, talk to people in the industry sometimes and they'll be like, well, we do it this way because it works. But then they want to improve a product or an application or something and if you don't know what's really giving you the effects that you desire, how can you make improvements? Um, so what excites me about research actually is really understanding precisely what's going on. And if I do, if I understand, then I can manipulate and modify an engineer to get a new feature that I'd like to add or improvement that I'd like. Um, so my focus is always getting down to that real fundamental understanding. Um, and I just find, you know, knowing is actually pretty exciting to me. <laughs> just knowing why something works the way it does. Um, and I think you'll find it with engineers and scientists that's, that's a lot of what drives them, just to really understand. And if you can do that, then you can make things better.